Okay, so it is midnight, um, but I remembered a few minutes ago that I have an AP Chem review tomorrow for four hours, so my brain is going to be really fried from that, just like it was fried last week, um, because of Easter and what have you. So I'm hoping to make, sorry, this one a bit longer to make up for uh, last week's lack of check-in. Um, I emailed my expert um, and I BCC'd you on that, um, but basically what I just said was a while ago um, I contacted you requesting guidance on a project of mine, you told me that I needed a teacher to contact you, and she, Hillary Rupert, told me that she had done so, meaning that I am alright to contact you again. I explained the project again, uh, I actually just copy and pasted the thing that I've been texting, I mean, sending to all of my professors, um, just move, um, and then I said, is it possible for me to email you a few different questions, I'm visiting Hofstra, which is where she works, on May 5th for the open house, which I am sure is a hectic time for the faculty at the university, but if there's any way to meet, I am sure that it would be a wonderful opportunity to speak on this project. If not, strictly email to email is perfectly fine, even if we were to meet, we would need to email back and forth. Um, she hasn't gotten back to me, and it has been four days, so I'm a little pressed about that. Um, and, um, so I emailed her and I've been watching this documentary, documentary series, um, called The Making of the Mob New York, which is about, um, Lucky, Luci Lucky Luciano's gang. Um, and of course, Lucky Luciano ties in very closely with Joseph Mazzaria. Um, because that's kind of where Lucky Luciano came from, working for Joseph Mazzaria. Um, and then certain contracts were made that, uh, binded, uh, Luciano to Mazzaria, which is why Luciano decided that Mazzaria needed to be killed, um, so that he didn't have to keep being underneath his thumb, which I think is just fascinating because while I use the word kingpin a lot in uh, my projects, I guess I don't really realize the scale of it because like he had a reach far and wide, like his operations went to Jersey for Atlantic City and stuff, and like he controlled a lot of men and sold booze to a lot of the speakeasies in, speakeasies in New York, like in the 20s there were a hundred thousand speakeasies, give or take, and he was supplying booze to like 50% of those. And so there was like a hierarchy as there is an all organized crime. Um, but it's just kind of crazy to see how Luciano fits into that. And I'm going to consider the documentary a valid source because of all of the experts that were um, consulted in the making of it and actually make an appearance in, to kind of explain what happened. Um, there's authors and historians and actually the grandson of one of Luciano's like closest friends, Maya Lansky, um, is in it kind of speaking about what he knows from his grandfather um, and his father, which is like really kind of crazy to like watch. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to consider that a valid source for historical stuff. And then just thinking about it from a criminological standpoint, um, I want to think more about the anti and pro conflicting immigrant sentiments at the time, because 
at that point there was a lot of nationalism due to World War One, and um, a lot of nationalism. Oh, which means that there was a lot of anti-immigrant uh, sentiments, but. Italian immigrants were, Italian and Irish immigrants at that time were pretty much the majority of the working class, um, just as with today's immigrants. Um, they did all of the dirty jobs that nobody wanted to do, um, like the Empire State Building was built mainly by immigrants. Um, so I kind of want to explore that, especially since um, organized crime was so based on where you were from and who your family was, um, especially in Mazaria's case, because back in Sicily, um, he had like an enemy, enemy uh, for his organized crime syndicate there who came to New York. Um, So that's really interesting and I can definitely look at that kind of stuff and even compare it to today and knowing what I know about organized crime criminologically which is kind of how everything needs to tie together based on complexity um, and relationship to relationship causes relationship to relationship and etc cetera, etc cetera, and you know fall guys and all that kind of stuff and like hierarchy because the hierarchy of the mob is different than the hierarchy of the mafia um because you don't have a godfather per se um so you you don't you're not all based on family and you're not all looking to one guy per se for your whole city which is kind of what you do for a mafia. So that's really interesting and the documentary I'm watching is actually brings that up um, in the first episode where it's like they were having this huge meeting and being like, okay, welcome to New York guys. It's the 1910s. We are not a mafia. We're a mob. We're doing crime. Yes, but we're not a family even though we have common roots. It also brings up a good point about how even within like immigrant populations, different uh, ethnicities wouldn't mix, like um, the Italians and the Jews and the Irish and the Italians and all of those, like they wouldn't mix, but Luciano, who of course is the man who had Masseria killed, um, was very close with the Jewish people um, from his teenage years and up and on, uh, which was really rare for the time and it actually freaked some people out, like Meyer Lansky was Jewish. Um, so that's very interesting from a criminological standpoint as well um, because of that kind of not seen before melding of cultures um yeah i think that's kind of all i wanted to say it is midnight i'm very tired so this is definitely more rambly than usual but um yeah i guess that's what's up with crime vlogs number three and four signing off